Hey YouTube, this is the Wheelman282 back again. Uh, I was at Goodwill this past week and I, I found this sitting in the uh, sitting on the shelf for only five dollars. Uh, some of you might know what this is, some of you might not. Uh, this is a uh, a Sears Telegames. This is like this is the Sears version of the Atari 2600. And I, I'm I'm pretty excited about this because this is my first Atari system, so. You know, this would be good to add to the collection. But, uh, you see, it, it came here with the, uh, this, uh, Vidtari dust cover and, uh, game storage unit. And, uh, it didn't come with anything else. No games, no controllers, no power adapter. So, still, it's a pretty good deal for only $5. So, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, you see, uh, it's, the, the dust cover is pretty filthy got a few scratches on it very minor scratches um, it's the old vid tari dust cover before they changed the name to uh, vid lid um, so just going to remove this and here's our uh, Sears telegames uh, it's actually in pretty good condition I guess the dust cover did its job uh, very few scratches there's one nick over here I noticed but other than that, it's very dust free. Very few scratches, if any. So uh I'm I'm pretty excited. This is my first one. So um I'm gonna take this in the house where I have a uh, LCD TV. Um so, so it'll uh, show up better on the camera. I'm gonna turn this thing on, test it, see if there's anything wrong with it. So uh let's, let's go in the house. Alright, so we're back in the house. I've got the Atari here beside my, my TV. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't have, I really don't have anything to do with Atari. because This is my first system. So here I've got uh, a Sega Genesis controller. It'll hook right in, it'll, it'll work. I've got a game, this is Frogger, doesn't have a label, but uh, you know, it's just what I got. And right here, uh, this is a, uh, Female phono to uh, male coax or male F connector. It just plugs right into the uh, RF uh, cable and uh, plugs into your TV. And what this does is it eliminates the switch box and uh, just it's going to give you a, a better signal. So, and over here, I've also got this is just a universal power supply. Um, you didn't already know the power connector is a, like a, a stereo jack. So um, I've just got the power supply set to 9 volts. And this is just going to plug into the back of the Atari and give me power. Since I don't have an official um, power adapter. So uh, give me a second. Let me get this hooked up. And we're going to test this thing out. Alright. So I've got the Atari uh, hooked up to the TV. I'm just going to turn this on. And we're going to see if we get any video. And we do. It's working. This is great. Uh, there does seem to be some interference on the screen. But it is working. Hmm. This is this is good news. Okay, so let's see if we can play a game. I'm going to reset it here. Okay, well, I noticed right off I can't move backwards, or the, the down direction on the D-pad doesn't work. So that's a problem, we've got to fix that. Um, well, there's no button action on this game, I don't think. So yeah, I can't move downward on the D-pad, so that's one problem. Uh, the other problem is there's some interference on the screen of some kind, so we got to figure that out too. So, but this is good; it does work. So, let's uh, take this back in the workshop and see if we can find something wrong with it. All right. Also, off camera, I tested uh, the, the you know the switches up here. Uh, they 
they all work. But um, they kind of have to fiddle with them to get them to uh, work properly. For example, if I wanted to change the TV color to black and white, I have to pull it down and kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it to show up in black and white. Um, also for um, game select, um, the switch is a little jumpy on screen. Uh, like if you pull it down, sometimes it'll jump two numbers uh, for the game, you know, the game type. So we got to fix these switches too, just clean them up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, that's another problem. All right, so to take this Atari apart, you're going to need, really only need one tool. And that is a number two Phillips head or cross head screwdriver. Now, remember that interference that we saw on the television? Uh, to fix that, you're also going to need a number two uh, security hex bit or a screwdriver, but I'm just going to be using the bit and the standard hex driver. So this is basically all you need to take this thing apart. It's pretty great. So uh, let's let's take this thing apart. All right. So in order to take this thing apart, there are uh, eight screws. There's a uh, one here, 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 and here. And then two here on the top, and then there's one or two here in the middle. So let's get this thing open. So we're just going to lift here on the front. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, the back. And we're going to lift here on the front a bit. Just pull it up, and the top will just pop right off, like so. All right. So here's the inside. Uh, looks pretty clean. Got a little sticker here that just came off. Uh, it says August 13th, 1987. Or is it 81? I can't tell. All right, so remember our problem was um, the controller port is slightly broken. Um, there was some interference on the TV and the switches were a little bit fiddly. So uh, let's strip this thing down even further. You want to take off your, uh, your little RF connector here. And that should be it. That's the, really the only thing holding this in. So turn this around sideways. And the whole motherboard, this whole unit should just come right out. Just like so. And here we have uh, our ports and our power jack with a little um, plastic protector. So we're just going to dump that off. Uh, I noticed when I was plugging in the controller port earlier that um, it was a little bit it was it was a little bit difficult to get in. Maybe that was because I was using a Genesis controller. Not really sure. Um, but looking at this controller port, it's uh, it seems to be a bit I don't know warped or something. Like it doesn't I don't know like it's been squished almost. I don't really see how that could happen unless it's just um I know, maybe this the the plastic is getting old or something so uh, we're going to fix that and uh so yeah we're just going to take this just going to take the motherboard and all the circuitry apart even further and uh see what's going on here all right so here we have the insides of the atari just uh taken out uh, to strip this thing down, down even further, what we're going to need to do, let's move this light here. What we're going to need to do is uh, we've got a screw right here beside the RF jack, and then another one here on this side. So we're just going to take those out, and then we're going to disconnect this uh, power uh, ribbon cable here, and we're just going to take off this whole top board just to disconnect it from the, uh, the motherboard.
So we've taken off the uh, switchboard. Uh, we're just going to set this to the side for now. We're going to fix that later. Uh, but here's what we're interested in. It's the uh, motherboard. So, um, remember that controller port wasn't working. Or that the, the down position wasn't working. So I'm, I'm just going to do a little quick visual inspection of the, uh, the solder joints here. See if we have any broken ones or anything. Or maybe there's... And maybe it just needs to be cleaned, you know, who knows. So I'm just going to do a quick inspection and uh, we'll get right back to you. All right, so I have found the problem with the controller port, at least. Um, this solder joint right here is actually broken. So um, that's, that's definitely a problem. We can fix that easily. And uh, just looking over some more of the points, we see that there are um, over here on this port, on this port, for example, these two uh, joints right here actually have very little solder on them, like they haven't even been soldered correctly. So, um, also, and also this one right here. So uh, that's that's a problem. So we're going to fix that. We're going to reflow these joints, put some fresh solder on them, and hopefully that'll clear up the problem. Uh, but um, I just want to tear this thing down further. So, you know, check for any more, you know, bad joints like that on the motherboard. And if there are any, I'm going to fix those too. So I'm just going to tear this down real quick. Okay, so here's the motherboard exposed. Uh, you see we have two more screws here on the bottom holding the motherboard in. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick visual inspection of the motherboard to see if we had any of those, um, those poor solder joints. I'm going to go ahead and mark them with a sharpie if I find any, so I can just go back and fix them. But I'm, just going to take this, I'm going to take this thing out, you know, give it a, a, a visual inspection, and uh, we're going to go from there. Okay, so uh, what I've done, I've just gone over the, uh, the motherboard, um, just really looking closely at all the joints. And every joint that I found that's bad, I didn't find any more broken joints, but any, any points that I found that are just you know lacking solder or just weren't soldered properly, I just put a black dot beside them like up here. I put a couple of black dots here and right here, here as well. Um, here on the power adapter um, solder joint, I put one there couple over here on this other um, joystick port they weren't broken but they were seriously lacking solder they just weren't weren't soldered properly I also found one down here and also over here um, and also one out here on the uh, cartridge connector so what I'm going to do um, I'm just going to put flux on each one of these bad spots I've, again I'm using uh, liquid flux you can use paste also, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna ap apply a little bit of flux to each of these bad joints. And I'm gonna go over them with um, a soldering iron and a, a, a little bit of solder just to just to fix those points to make sure they work properly and, and they're conducting you know, like they should. All right, so I'm just gonna apply some flux here to the uh, these uh, solder joints that aren't very well manufactured. So I'm just going to apply some right here to these. Remember where I've got the black dots. And also down here further down. Alright, so uh, we're just going to reflow these joints. Uh, I did a bit of testing and um, this solder that I normally use is a little bit too thick. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm using a thinner gauge um, solder. So um, I've already soldered these two points here. These, this one, or these these two were lacking solder. So um, I just, I, I've already fixed those two. But um, over here on the other controller port, we've got... Uh, 
this one here is cracked and this one here on the bottom is missing some solder so I'm just going to fix those real quick again I've already applied flux to these And this one here needs a little bit, a little bit more. There we are. All right, so that one's fixed. The broken, that broken joint is fixed, and I've reflowed. Um, any of these joints that were missing solder so I'm just going to go ahead and fix the one for the power and the one for um, the ribbon cable the control um, sorry the cartridge port and there there's a couple down down this way that I want to fix as well so I'm going to reflow this one here this one here and then I'm going to move down here to fix these other two Oh yeah, I forgot. And the uh, the one for the uh, power jack. Put a little bit more on that one. There we go. So uh, yeah, that's all of them. So the soldering is done. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to take my uh, Q-tip with 91% uh, alcohol on it. I'm just going to go over the uh, anywhere I put flux and just clean that flux up. Not that it's going to hurt anything, but you know, just to clean it up and make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so this is just like a bit of info, just in case you ever need it. Uh, there are two potentiometers on this uh, motherboard. You got one here on the left and one here on the on the right. Uh, the one here on the left is labeled uh, color adjustment. And what this pot does is um, it adjusts you know, like the tint or the hue of the picture. So, you know, if your colors look like kind of strange or you you know the colors seem a bit off uh, you can actually uh, adjust this left to right just a little bit and uh, you can fix your colors if they don't look proper and then over here on the right you have this uh, another pot labeled sound adjustment and uh, this controls just the, the audio it you know turns it up and down uh, if it sounds a little bit too weak uh, you can uh, turn it up and it'll um, you know fix your audio if 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 that's the if that's a problem i've never had to adjust that before but you know it's there just in case you ever need it so that's just some info just in case you might never need that you know you can you can actually adjust 
your picture and sound on the Atari, you know, if there's ever a problem. All right, so coming back to the motherboard here, remember I said that the uh, the controller port is kind of warped or something to where it, I don't know, it's just really tight. So uh, what I'm going to attempt to do, um, I'm gonna, I've got this, just a serial plug here. It doesn't, it doesn't go to anything. It's just a, just a cord. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna plug this in here. And you know, see, it's, it's pretty difficult to get in there. And I'm gonna take a, um, a heat gun and put it on the lowest setting. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to expand this plastic, try to let it heat up and expand. I'm not trying to melt this thing, so I'm just gonna very gently heat it try to get this thing to uh, expand to where it'll, it'll accept a uh, a plug better than it nor than it does right now because uh, i think that's why the solder joint on the bottom broke because people were trying to you know jam the plug in there to get it to just to get it to go in and then it, and it broke a solder joint that's just that's my theory so i'm just i'm just going to try to expand this port just to, so it'll be easier to put to plug a controller in. All right, so I went ahead and heated up both ports. Uh, I, did, I did both of them because they were both kind of tight. Uh, and I let it cool down with the plug inside. So um, just taking this in and out, it, it goes much easier. Uh, I mean, there's, there's like, I mean, it's just, it's just like it should be. There, there's no forcing or, uh, or, you know, wiggling to get it in and out. It's just, you know, it, it works like it's supposed to. So, I mean, there is, there is some tension, but yeah, it's supposed to be that way. So that's great. That's, that's done. All right. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and clean the cartridge slot since I've already got it out. You know, since I've already got the motherboard out. So, um. The Atari and the telegames use a uh, like a dust cover to protect the cartridge slot. So when you insert a game, um, it pushes these two tabs here on the side up, and it lifts this uh, it lifts this um, middle dust protector up as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take two objects here. I'm just got a uh, an awl and a little precision screwdriver. It doesn't really matter what you use, but I'm just going to lift both sides of this. Um, this dust protector up or these little those little mechanisms just so I can open up the slot and clean it and um, to do this just use something flat and stiff so for example here I'm just going to use this um, this little PC blank for um, you know for cards that go in, that goes in your PC and just a, a cloth and you're also going to need 91% um, alcohol. So what you're going to do is take your, uh, your, your blank and just put it inside your cloth like so. And you're just going to put some alcohol on this. And I'm going to gently, very gently, uh, run it in in and out of the cartridge slot and I'm gonna be what I'm gonna do is be careful not to push down on the pins I'm just gonna push straight in and pull straight back out just like a normal game would be inserted and taken out um, I don't want to bend the pins back inside the cartridge slot like down to where they'd be flat and not touching the cart the the contacts so I'm just gonna go in and out and that's all um, I'm gonna do this several times um, but just be careful not to bend the pins because um, it's pretty much impossible to take off this black protector, this black dust cover, without desoldering the actual socket. So just be extra careful when you do this.
and you see here we've got some uh some residue off of the pins so that's that's a good sign it means it's, it's cleaning well and uh yeah these we're just doing this as a you know just pre preventative maintenance so i'm just going to keep on doing this until the cartridge i'm sorry until the contacts come out clean all right so now that we're done with the motherboard and cleaning the cartridge slot next we're going to work on the switches and um there's really not an easy way to clean these but it's just something that's got to be done so i'm going to show you how to do this what you're going to need is a pair of needle nose pliers and an awl or maybe um, a precision screwdriver just something small that you can poke with so here's what we're going to do um, we're going to start with the power switch first go ahead and um, remove the little um, foam glide thing here whatever that is a little protector just go ahead and remove that and what we have to do is we have to um these little uh, tabs that hold the uh the switch body on we have to uh, bend those outwards there's four on each I mean, there's two on each side so four in total we have to bend those outwards and be very careful when you do this because these are kind of these are slightly spring loaded, but when you uh, bend those off, this body is going to come off like so. And it takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of work, but um, they'll just kind of just kind of work its way off. Let's see if I can't get this. This is a bit a little bit of a pain, like I said. There we go. Yeah, it's coming off now. So, what you've got is your actual switch. And it's got two of these um, contacts. Well, let's see. It's got these two contacts. And what they do is they just sit, it's kind of how they're shaped. They just sit in there like this and the switch you know moves it moves them back and forth and they uh glide on these switch contacts so what we need to do is we need to take um q-tip and alcohol and just clean off the metal residue on the uh the spring contacts and on the contacts on the actual board uh clean off both of these and then um we're just going to put them back on clamp these um these little uh, tie downs back in and then it should work fine but what we're really after is just cleaning off the uh, the metal residue that's built up over the past 30 years so I've got my uh, q-tip with alcohol on it I'm just going to take the spring contact and I'm just going to clean this thing off And I'm going to use a little bit of force. Be careful not to actually actually bend the contact. I'm just going to hold it between my fingers. And I'm just going to use some force to wipe this down. And I can see on the, on the Q-tip it's coming clean. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Oh yeah, yeah, it's working. So that one's done. Move on to this one. This one's actually a little bit dirtier. All right, that one's done. And uh, I'm gonna take our Q-tip again and we're just gonna clean the contacts here on this board.
and I can see on the Q-tip there is some residue that's come off. So that's a good sign. So I'm just really going to go over this pretty thoroughly, just to make sure these uh, contacts clean up well. So I don't want to have to do this again because it is a kind of a pain. So it's pretty well clean. Uh, just in case you're having some trouble, uh, you can use a piece of sandpaper. Um, I don't know what grit this is. This is just a scrap piece of sandpaper I keep around. But if uh, your contacts are really gummed up or they're really dirty and you can't get them clean with just a Q-tip, you can actually, you can gently, very gently, go over the contacts like so. And you can get off any, um, you know, any residue that might be hanging around. And you can also um, clean your, your spring contacts, you know, just in case you have to. In this case, they weren't really all that bad. So I did lightly go over them just to make sure that they do work. But, you know, if, if, if you need to, you can use a piece of sandpaper just to very gently sand these down. All right, so this thing is clean. This switch is clean anyway, so I'm going to take my actual physical switch and I'm going to take the contacts and uh, the springy side on the contact goes inside the switch. So this is going to lay in there just like that and then also the other one like that. And uh, the best way to put these back on is to hold this, this whole board upside down and uh, take your needle nose pliers and bend these outwards this way just slightly so that they don't get hung up on the switchboard and what you're going to do is when you hold this this whole circuit board upside down you're going to put the switch on and it's going to hold these contacts in and then you can hold the, the whole switch on with your hand and then use either your uh, pliers or a little poking tool to bend those these little holders back in to the sides of the switch here so that's what I'm going to do and uh, just kind of give you an idea of how you're going to reassemble this all right so we're just going to take our circuit board here I'm going to turn this upside down and I've got my switch I'm just going to try my best just fit this onto the switch and you it might require some work but it should uh, just pop right on there yeah like that so the next step is to hold this on with your thumbs or with your thumb and then take your either your pliers or your uh, scratching tool or whatever And you're just going to bend these um, these little holders back down over the switch. So that's what I'm going to do. Try my best to anyway. All right. So after a bit of work, didn't take too long. I just used my pliers to uh, put these little holders back on. But after a bit of work, the switch works really smooth you know yeah it's it's reconditioned it's clean so go ahead and put your little uh foam pad back on and it's just going to fit over the square base of the switch like so and what i'm going to do now is move on to the other side i'm going to clean all the switches but i'm going to move on to this side for now and so you've got um these other two switches, or these other switches on this side, like the power switch, were toggle switches. But these are not. These are actually spring-loaded. So they, uh, you know, when you pull them down, they go back up. So these actually have a spring inside. But they work basically the same way. Uh, you just have to really be careful not to lose that spring. And just take it apart with care. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So uh, go ahead and take off your little foam protector. Lay it to the side, and again, you're gonna have to take off your uh, 
the clips on the side. All right, so I've taken off the uh, the other type of switch. Is the one that's, that's uh, spring loaded. This is the reset switch, and uh, this one's this one's can be pretty tricky to take to to put back together, but it's not too difficult. Um, but this is the basic construction of it. You've got uh, your two contacts. Whoops. Got your two contacts and your spring that goes here in the middle. So it's just like that. And um, uh, it's just going to fit together just like that. And you can see that the uh, part of the spring that's hanging off is going to touch right here on this little um, raised section. And that's, what's, that's what loads the spring. So uh, what you're going to do is just clean the contacts again on both the switch and the uh, the board, just like you do on a power switch or uh, just any other toggle switch. It's basically the same method. Uh, then you just have, kind of have to do your best to um, load the spring onto here and just push it all back together. Uh, it can be, again, it can be kind of kind of tricky, but it you know it can be done. And also something I've, something else I forgot to mention uh, with these contacts. Um, when you get done cleaning them, you can actually, uh, the, the spring part, you can actually bend them up just a little bit. Like that, on, uh, both, on both sides. Just, and this is just, just to make sure that um, it's pressing down firmly on the contacts on the board. Just to make sure it's gonna, you know, press down firmly when, this, when the switch is all put back together. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clean these contacts, clean off the, uh, these uh, contacts here. And uh, I'm just going to put that back together. And um, I'm going to go ahead and clean all the switches, make sure they all function properly. And um, we're going to go from there. I'm also going to clean the, uh, the channel selector switch here. So this one is a lot easier to get off than the other switches. Uh, so what you do is, um, there's nothing really holding this on except for a couple of uh, little plastic clips that are actually attached to the switch. So um, you actually have to kind of bend this off. So um, just be really careful when you do this. You don't want to break it or anything. Um, but uh, take your little tool here and we're just going to kind of pry this off the best we can kind of hold hold your finger on this on the actual switch it's part of the circuit board and we're just going to try to kind of pry it up a little bit like like so and then it should just come off like that and uh here's our switch and then here's our little um our contact so uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. See it's a little bit dirty there. I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. Uh, I'm also going to go gonna, uh, stretch these out a little bit like so. Yeah, like that. And I'm also going to clean off the contacts on here. All right, so I'm um, done cleaning this, uh, this channel slitter switch. So what I'm going to do we're gonna uh, again. We we'll have to turn this the circuit board upside down to get this to work properly. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the switch upside down. Put the contact in like that. And we'll turn this upside down. And uh, this is this is just uh, just clip on. So put the doesn't matter which side you put on first. But just put one side on. Uh, push the switch over to one side and then push the other side on like that and uh, just kind of test your switch make sure it works properly and of course it should so as long as you feel some resistance in there you know when it switches then you're good to go all right so we're uh, back in the house now i've just got the atari uh just kind of hanging loose got it all hooked up just for testing purposes 
So the next thing we're going to need to do is fine tune our uh, RF box here. So what you're going to need to do that with is a number two hex security bit. Uh, and you're gonna need you're gonna need this because the uh, the screw inside the, the RF box is a uh, is a uh, in a hexagonal shape. So I've just got the uh, Sega Genesis controller hooked up, got the power hooked up. So uh, we're just gonna take our security bit and you see this little hole right here. You're just gonna stick it right in there like so. And I'm gonna turn the TV uh, TV's already on. I'm gonna turn the Atari on. And see, we still have that interference. So, what we're going to do, you just turn it left or right, depending on your Atari. You're going to have to turn this left or right. But just slowly turn it and watch your TV and see, and just, just look when the uh, interference goes away. So, we're just going to turn this like so. And, uh, it's not as bad. There's still a little bit of interference, so I'm going to turn a little bit more. And uh, there it is. It is... There's no more interference on the, on the TV screen. It looks absolutely perfect. So, that's done. I turned the Atari off. Actually, I want to show you these switches too. Uh, remember, we 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 reconditioned these switches. So um, before the, uh, the the for example the black and white switch, it was kind of buggy when you turned it down. It would had had to jiggle it a little bit to to make it switch. But uh, now when I use turn the the switch on and off, it's instant. It works perfectly, like so. And uh, remember the game select switch. It's a little bit jumpy, so when I pull the game select, it changes perfectly. So that's awesome. All the switches work. Uh, the RF box is tuned up correctly, and uh, we're done. All we have to do is reassemble this. Um, actually, I want to clean the case first. I, I'm going to give the, the, the top and bottom of the case a good clean, and we're just going to reassemble this. And we'll be finished. All right, also, you can see now that uh, the controller port works very well. Now uh, that we fixed it, I can move down and uh, just move in all directions. Uh, there's no button action in Frogger, but I'm sure that works too. I'll pop in another game and, uh, and we'll test that out. All right, so here's basketball. Not really a great game, but I mean, it'll, it works for a, a tech demo, I guess. So I can, you know, I can move in all directions. I can move down again. The, the D-pad works and button action works too, which is really great. So uh, our controller port is fixed. All right, so uh, I've got, uh, the, we're back in the workshop. Uh, I've got both the top and the bottom half of the Atari uh, cleaned up. So uh, we're gonna reassemble this thing. So the first thing to do is take your RF cable and, uh, one side has a shorter post than the other side. So the shorter post is going to go into the motherboard. So we're just going to feed this through the hole on the back. Like so. Just give yourself some, some slack. Just some room to work with. Uh, next, take your uh, the motherboard and your little uh, controller port sleeve. And uh, just going to put it in into the back of the Atari. Slide the controller ports in first, and then it should just lay down. Uh, now take your RF cable and run it to the side, run it through the side of the switch box. Not this, this mine is laying underneath the under, underneath the motherboard, but uh, run it to the side so you won't have any any drag on the on the cable. And I'm just going to wrap it around this post a bit and plug it into the motherboard like so. So uh, when you pull on your cable, you should uh, it shouldn't be any any kind of uh, any drag. Uh, I'll take a little data manufacturer piece of paper. I'm just going to lay it in there, just because it was in there. And 
next what you're going to do is take the top of your unit and you're going to put it on onto the uh, Atari. So uh, there's a little bit trick to little trick to make this work better. Uh, make sure all your switches are in the up position, and uh, also go ahead and make sure all your foam donuts are on there. Make sure they're seated properly with their, you know, they have little square holes. So just make sure they're on there properly. So uh, to make this fit a little bit better, or to go on easier, um, put the switches through the slots first, and push the back of the Atari down, and let the front fall like that. Now lift up on the back and let the front fall in. Just push it down and then push the back back down like that. So that's just that's the basic assembly. So uh, there we go. Our, uh, we're just I'm just right now I'm just going to put the screws back in and we'll be finished. So that's everything. Uh, this telegames looked pretty good on the outside, but it, it definitely had some problems. So we fixed the controller port, cleaned the cartridge slot, and uh, cleaned those buttons up. And now we've got a, a pretty good working uh, telegames here. Uh, so uh, hopefully this was informative to you. Um, maybe if you've got one laying around that's seen better days, you can use this to kind of help you get it revived and uh, back in action. So. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see y'all later.